Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Tar in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon raw tutorial, I'll be showing you guys the four steps I always use for setting up my vocal chain. Basically, I'm gonna give you guys the philosophy and ideology behind how I approach, how do I mix this vocal, where do I start, and how this should end. Let's get right to it. This is for any DAW, by the way, just a heads up. So I'm gonna play you this vocal. Uh, long story short, this is from my brother Gassed Up. This song is called I I I. I'ma head out. Uh, it's a hilarious song. Super creative kid. Uh, listen to this vocal and hear what it sounds like and what we have. Andy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on the suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Roll one up, now we burning on the seas. That nigga still we're hating now, and I don't give a fuck. I got work in the morning. Okay, cool. So you can hear the vocal. You hear this hilarious song with this SpongeBob type references. Super creative kid. Shout out to Gassed Up. Now, I'm going to show you how I went about mixing that vocal. How did I decide, okay, what's first and how do we end up to the end? So the first thing I always, always like to do when I'm thinking about the vocal is the problems. I like to fix the problems first. And what do I say when I, what do I mean when I say the problems? I mean things like pitch correction, making sure that the vocals are in key. And why am I looking for those problems? It's because, think about it. If I don't fix the problems first, then when I get to analog saturation and boosting and adding all these bells and whistles, guess what you're also boosting? You're boosting the problem. So I like to attack those first before I even do anything else. And that's how I feel like everyone should go about it. Fix what you hear in the vocal that could be a problem first before you move on. So of course I move right on over here and I'm going to apply pitch correction. Uh, for this one right now, I'm using the Auto-Tune EFX plugin. Uh, I love that plugin. Uh, you can use Auto-Tune Pro. Uh, Crispy Tuner is also really dope. Any of your effects driven plugins as far as pitch correction is concerned. So that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I have to explain to you guys pitch correction and things of that nature. So I like to put that first at the very top. That goes first. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to EQ. Now, if you look at my EQ, you see a lot of subtractive EQing. What I'm doing is I'm getting rid of a lot of frequencies that I wanted to get rid of. Now, they may not be problems per se, but they were something that I wanted to get rid of in the vocal to make it fit in the song a little bit more. So I'm going to play you this vocal. I'm going to bypass this back and forth so you can hear what it actually did, then I'll explain it. So without first, listen closely. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Roll one up, now we burning on the seas. That nigga Squidward hating now, and I don't give a fuck. Okay, if you listen to that closely, you can tell that when I don't have an engage, it feels like the vocal is kind of like in here, like a paper cup. And when I engage it, you feel like the vocal cuts through a bit more. A lot of that low end gets rolled off because I'm putting a, 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 um, a high pass on it, a low cut, let's not confuse anyone. I put a low cut uh, filter on the bottom and you'll notice that it actually even gets a little brighter from subtractively EQing. And this is what is so powerful. I'm getting a brighter vocal, more clean, uh, just by actually taking out those problem frequencies. Now, a lot of different ways that you can find those problem frequencies can be sweeping, which I don't advise to just go and sweep and say, okay, that's bad, take it out. But really listen to your vocal, find the spots that you say, ah, a little bit too much mud and listen to it within the music to make a decision. So I can show you that right here. Let me play this for you right quick. So what I'm gonna do is I took out a lot in this 314 Hertz frequency, which I'm guaranteeing was probably a little bit mud, uh, a lot of uh, 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 muddiness and I wanted to get more clarity. So I took a lot of that out. So let's just crank it up and then I'll take it out. Listen close. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Roll on up, now we burning on the sea. So if you listen to that, you notice the boxiness of that vocal. You notice that when I have it even just at its nominal level, you'll notice, ah, the vocal gets a little bit more round and boxy in that tone. But when I take it out, it gets a lot more clear. You, you can feel the presence of the vocal. I liked it, so that's why I took it out. So that's basically my ideology with that, is EQ, take out the pre frequencies that I don't like to make the entire song vocal-wise better. 
Next thing I like to do is I like to use my de-esser. And with the de-esser, uh, unlike uh, what you would think as far as using it for the top end, I actually did some EQing in the one before to take out some of the top end. But for this, I like to attack this three kind of kilohertz frequency range, which is a frequency that I noticed it always pops out so hard. But when I notice if I actually smooth it out with the de at the very beginning, when I start compressing, it's gonna sound so amazing because the vocal is gonna be a lot more concise. Listen closely to what I'm talking about. Watch this. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. So as soon as I have it engaged, I literally have a vocal that is already more controlled. Just because that frequency is a is a frequency that I like to call the pain frequency when it comes to that three kilohertz range, where uh, basically the vocal stands out a lot. And that's usually where you hear the, a lot of the volume coming from, from that vocal. So if I'm taking uh, a de and attacking that and saying, hey, turn that down, the rest of the vocal feels more level. And that's why I attack it right there at that part. So I like to DS after I EQ um, when my vocal chain. And I like to DS in that 40 to 37 hertz range, okay? Next thing I'm doing is, now I'm going to be doing some EQ. Now that I've attacked the problems in my vocal, I'm going to do some actual EQing. This is step number two, so I'm EQing now. So right here, I'm gonna show you before and after, so without first and then with, listen close. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Roll on up. Now we burning on the seas. That nigga Squidward hating now. Okay, so you when you hear it, you can hear closely that the vocal gets a lot thinner. It gets brighter. It is cutting through this mix. Trust me on this one. Uh, I noticed that you noticed that uh, it is getting thinner and brighter, but we're going to add the body back in. But now I have a vocal that is going to cut right through that mix, no problem. It has presence still, it's bright, it's not boxy, it is uh, going to get full, but now we have a vocal that is going to cut through that mix no matter what. And that's what I did with EQ. So what did I do with my EQ? So my EQ, I took off a ton of uh, 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 low end, once again at the 303 hertz range, I took off a ton of low end on the bottom of the vocal. Then I took off some more at the 890 hertz range, just to give me some more clarity. I'll show you what it sounds like with and without. So let me boost the 890 hertz range so you can hear what I actually took out. So listen close. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. Okay, so you'll hear that there was some presence in that range that, hey, for instance, sometimes you can leave that in or give it some more of that 890 hertz range. For this particular song, I wanted the vocal to sit a little further back, so that's where I made that decision in doing that. So I took off some more EQ, uh, uh, more volume at the 890 hertz range, took that out. Next thing I did was took out some more of the pain frequency. Now I know you're saying like, hey, you're still subtracting EQ and I got you, give me a sec. I took out some more of that 3.5 kilohertz range because that is that pain frequency. That's that frequency that I'm really not a fan of that is needed, but I just like to tame it back because that's the frequency that can be jarring to your ear and mess with you. So I'm gonna boost it to let you hear it and then I'm gonna take it back down. Listen close. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. So you notice when I put it, when I take it out, you'll notice that it's a lot easier to listen to, but the more that's in there, you'll notice that it's like, eh, it kind of sounds nasty. Like you kind of don't want to, after a while, it'll stress your ear. So I like to just tame that, tame that, tame that as much as I can before I start to do anything else. Now let's boost something. So what I did was I boosted at the 11,000 hertz range. And I like to boost there sometimes, Uh, depends on the, the nature or the feeling of the song, depending on how it feels. I boosted about 4.5 dB um, right at that range, and this is what I got. So I'll take it out and then I'll put it back in just so you can hear it. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. So you can hear clarity, just it feels more brilliant, more intelligible, it just gets shinier uh, when you just add some of that top end. So now I got the vocal that sounds like that, with and without. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. 
Ooh. Now we have a vocal that is super bright, uh, that cuts right through that mix and it has a lot of clarity. Okay. Now, step three, compression. Now I'm going to add compression. Remember, remember we're compressing because we want to basically add some uh, consistency to our vocal. We want to control our dynamics uh, of our vocals. That means the volume. That means how quiet things are. We want to bring them up and how loud things are. We want to bring them down. We want to create a vocal that is more concise. So first thing I like to do is I'll add a compressor. I'll show you before and after. Listen close without first. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on the suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Okay, so you can hear that the body comes back and I got the body back without the stuff that I didn't like. And now I have this vocal that is cutting through the mix that has somebody and that sounds pretty straightforward as far as cutting through to the mix. I like to use uh, the Bluey because the Bluey uh, CLA 76 from Waze has so much body on it that I just love and adore them so much. So I love that plugin. Next thing I do, more EQing, I use this Rvox, which I highly recommend to anyone starting out. It has a set attack and release time that you don't have to manipulate. All you have to do is bring down a compressor until you like the way it sounds. So I basically put mine right here. Listen to what it sounds like. Dandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on the suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Bro, on up. Now we burning on the sea. Okay, so I'll go back one step just to help you understand what happened in that step. When it comes to my first compressor that I'm putting onto my vocal, I usually like to have an extremely slow attack time and a very fast release, only because I'm really trying to get volume out of the vocal. So you can see from my Bluey that I have this very slow attack which is over here, and I have this very fast release. I'm just trying to, con I want all the transient still information, but I want a little bit of control. So it's me more or less trying to get the volume out of the vocal without trying to destroy the transients of the actual thing. Now, that's where I head on over to the Rvox, where I'm trying to control more of the transients now. Now that I got my volume out of the vocal, I want to control some of those peaks. So I use this right here, this Rvox, to control some of my peaks to give me some more face uh, out of the vocal, which is what you're hearing right here. Listen again. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on the suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. So I got more face without actually doing anything uh, really drastic to the vocal. I com I'm compressing, of course, but I'm controlling those peaks more. And that's what I got out of the R-Box. Next thing I like to use is another compressor. Now, this is my favorite step in the compression phase of my mixing vocals. Uh, so we're still on compressing, by the way. And the reason why we're right here with this one is, or I, why I use this one is because now I'm really trying to fit it into the song. I'm trying to glue it into the song. And I'll let you hear this uh, with and without in the song. Listen closely. So without first. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on the suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Roll one up. Now we burning on the sea. Okay, now of course I can turn that up just to match a little bit. I'm going to do that for you right now. So you hear it get tough, but I'm going to put it at the same volume so you can hear what it actually did. Listen closely. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on the suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Roll one up, now we burning on the seas. That nigga still we're hating now. So you can hear, I match the volumes, and now you can hear that it actually sits in a better spot. Yeah, it got tough, but that's because we're adding compression. But now it kind of feels like it just belongs in the beat a little bit more. And that came with me playing around with the attack and release settings. As you can see, I, put a, I did a really fast attack on this to control those peaks because I felt like it needed to be a little bit more behind the beat. So, uh, word of advice, when you're looking for something to be a little bit more behind the beat, uh, put a little bit more attack on it and you'll notice that it'll do that. Or you can just dip a little bit out at the 2K range another day. Uh, I also have a really fast attack. So that compression is really only hitting the um, the transients. It's really just attacking those transients and then releasing once those transients go away. So that's why you see this really fast attack and this really fast release. And that's what's happening there. So I use this, this stage of the compression to really figure out where this belongs in the beat and how it should feel and vibe. Okay. Now, 
the last thing that I do, let's see, we did problems, we did our EQ compression. Now let's move on to our very last thing that we I like to use. And the very last thing I like to use is some analog saturation. Now granted, for my sticklers out there, this is not actual analog saturation, this is emulation analog saturation, meaning this is a style that is taking from actually having outboard gear that gives you analog saturation. Just keep that in mind. But we're gonna add analog saturation. Analog saturation adds color to your vocals, it adds um, uh, harmonics, distortion, the good kind, and all kinds of things to your vocals. So if you're looking for a certain color on your vocals, analog saturation is your answer. You'll notice a lot of different things that it creates. So I'll play it for you right quick. Let's play it soloed and listen closely to the analog saturation on this. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. Bro, one up. Now we burning on the seas. That nigga Squidward hating now. And I don't give a fuck. Okay, so if you hear, you hear the mid range get a lot smoother, and you hear the top end actually get a lot more. Claire. Now, granted, there are S's and T's. I'll explain that in a second. But you do hear a more smooth uh, vocal. You feel like it got a little bit more exciting. And it sounds actually uh, great in the mix. I'll let you hear it. Listen to this right quick. I'll back, back I'll take it out first and then put it back in. Listen close. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on that suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. My nigga Patrick coming too. So you hear it, it starts to cut through the mix a lot more just with adding the saturation. So that's why it's super important. Now, granted, after that, I know you see other plugins here. Uh, those were my four steps. But of course, after I do that, there are little things that I may do. Maybe I may say, ah, it leaves a little bit more presence. And what I'll do is I'll add an EQ or, ah, you know what? It needs a little bit uh, of the DSing, which I'll add at the end. There are little things that you do after those four steps that you need to attack as far as what have I created that I need to tame just a little bit or do I need a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But granted, I love what I've done coming to this point. Anything after that point is basically me just cleaning it up, like just kind of sweeping it up after I give it a fresh cut if that makes any sense. I do all kinds of things like uh, parallel compression, which gives it this volume and all kinds of things. So it all ends in giving me a vocal that sounds like this, all starting from my four steps. Listen close to the final vocal. Sandy. I know Sandy trying to fuck with me. I know she wet up on the suit. Ooh, you know a nigga got love for you. So it all started from my four steps as far as attacking the problems, then I'm EQing, then I'm compressing, and then after I'm compressing, I'm adding analog saturation. Those are my four steps that I always go about when it comes to creating my vocal chain. Of course, there are more things that I do after that, but as far as the primary basics that I always use, I want to give you guys a philosophy, an ideology on how you could do it and go about doing the same thing. So I hope that was very helpful. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, by the way, you can email me at helpmedevon at gmail.com. But I'm also in my comment section all day. You can lick uh, and basically hit me there. Uh, and... Let me know what you guys want to see next. I'm always up to hear that. And um, head on over to helpmedevon.info for more tutorials, uh, more uh, templates and stuff like this one uh, for all your DAWs. And until next time, you guys.